You may have heard of mega campaigns or grand campaigns before. They are the greatest, longest, and most grand campaign you can undertake in Paradox Strategy games as you chart a course well over a thousand years long. In this video, I will explain in detail what mega campaigns are, how they work, and how you can embark on one yourself. Although at first they may seem intimidating or impossible, this is simply not true. With understanding and patience, you too can take on an adventure the likes of which you have never experienced before in strategy games. Let's get going. Starting with the basics, what is a mega campaign? To put it simply, it's a single campaign where you play through Crusader Kings, Europa Universalis, Victoria, Hearts of Iron, and Stellaris. All the main iconic Paradox Interactive strategy titles one after another. You will not simply be playing the normal starts of each game, but instead, through the use of the amazing save converter mods made by the glorious quality and love of modders, continue the same save game through all the titles. This means that after each title, the converter will give you the same map, culture, nations, and leaders you ended with in the sequel to continue. This allows you to have a campaign which you can fully invest in raising the stakes and immersion of a single campaign as it quickly becomes an epic of your family and nation's history in humanity's numerous chaotic eras of change. To do a full mega campaign, you will need to own all the titles, though DLCs are not required. I also want to take a moment to underline why a mega campaign is something not to be ignored or skipped. Most of you watching this, like myself, fell in love with strategy games either due to the scale, the ability to shape a nation or entity through history, or the fascinating and unexpected ways the story of your playthroughs can take. You never get the same thing, and the variety of a firm grounding in historical relevance and events is incredibly addicting and enjoyable. There is no place this is more true and fulfilling than a grand campaign. If you dive into one with the intention to play it out to the end, you will experience a campaign unlike anything you have ever done before. I really am not overselling or overpromising here, assuming you don't simply map paint and get bored over the first several hundred years. Mega campaigns require you to be patient and not overexpand. By watching the world develop in a dramatically different manner, you will see a history entirely unrecognizable by MIDI U4, at the latest. But all of its major events and diverging moments will make sense and make the story even more enjoyable to watch and fold. Whether it's the revolutionary movement in the 18th century caused by the Bavarian king being overthrown and replaced by early socialist radicals, or your forces fighting a battle for the survival of your dynasty and sovereignty in the middle of CK3, you have plenty of memorable moments that will be hard to forget. For anybody who starts one after watching this video, make sure to take it slow and savor your first. To start a mega campaign in its entirety, you will begin in Crusader Kings, though if you wish to skip it, you can start in any of the other games, though it's not a really a full mega campaign. There are three major starts I recommend in CK3, so let's cover them briefly. Base game 1066. This is the latest start possible and as a situation where the HRE is already formed, Byzantium is still alive and able to hold on, and many nations are more centralized. If you want to go forward with a more historical situation and powers, and a roughly recognizable political map for a while, this is the way to go. It also lessens the time in CK3 if you don't like the game or want to pace yourself. For many people's first mega campaign or newer Paradox players, I recommend this start. Base game 867. This start is 200 years before the first option and will increase your time in CK3 by 50%. This comes with the benefit of starting in the era of the Viking, war expansion being much easier, and many options to bring back historical cultures and religions which are not an option later. The price is that your game will quickly go very old history. If you want variety or to play out the Vikings or the British Civil War, this is a great choice. And the Fallen Eagle start. The Fallen Eagle mod allows you to start in the later era of the Roman Empire. It's an incredible mod that includes tons of flavor and a unique setting. It also happens to be compatible with a save translator, so choosing the 400s as a start date is an option, which will make you play CK3 much longer and start in the Roman era. The mod includes a lot of major historical events like the rise of Attila and the rise of Islam, so it's a really fun choice that includes a lot of historical events to keep things interesting. This timeline will be incredibly different, so be prepared. Mods allow you to have much more fun and in-depth campaigns, and mega campaigns are no different. Do note, there is an innate bit of risk with using mods in a mega campaign. If your mods bug or you have issues that kill a save file, you may have to convert really early or encounter problems that require you to restart. I don't say this to dissuade you, or with certainty that this will happen, but it is a possibility, and I want to give full disclosure. They are completely worth it in my opinion. I take it from a guy who has spent at least 10 hours bug fixing due to mods in my current mega campaign, the price can be high. Thankfully, my experience will hopefully save you lots of time and stress. I will cover each game in terms of what mods are really, really necessary and useful, as well as what you should avoid. 
I also have maintained mod packs for each of the games, which are really fun and stable if you want to skip the selection part and simply play with fun mods. Mods can easily be added by subscribing to them in Steam, adding them to a playset in your launcher, and launching with them. Keeping in mind that load order and the order they are put in does matter. You can also get them from the Paradox Plaza directly. To start off with, here's a link to my mod pack for CK3. It includes a lot of event mods, a few really necessary UI ones, and plenty of graphic enhancements. If you want to test out mods or a mod playlist to see if it works with a save translator, you can run the game in CK3 or any other, start a game as an observer, and run the game at high speed for at least 10 years, then try to save translate the file. Even though it's so early, it should work and will show you any major issues or conflicts with mods. Generally, anything that adds new cultures or religions may cause major issues, so be wary. The flavor mods I really recommend in any CK3 game in a mega campaign include a community flavor pack, very immersive events and tales, regional immersion and cultural enrichment, medieval arts, and Lulu's events. They provide flavor and variety, making CK3 way more interesting and non-repetitive. For graphic mods, I recommend Better Barbershop, the RUI mod, there are Lords and Ladies, Cities of Wonder, and Cat's Coat of Arms, as well as the Battlefield Duel Hotfix. There are plenty more. Take time to select what you want and get them working, as it's well worth taking the time to get good mods for your campaign, as it will make it more immersive and enjoyable, especially considering the time it will take, assuming you don't rush. E4 mods are a little more dangerous. Here's my mod list to start off with. Generally, I really recommend the Expanded Series, the Great Exhibition so your event pictures are more interesting, and 50 loading screens, as you may spend a lot of time doing them. For Victoria 3, the mod pack I have here is fairly limited, but works well and is pretty stable. The number one mod that will make this game way more fun and better is the Better Politics mod. It makes your political dynamics way more interesting and engaging. I really don't recommend playing any Victoria 3 campaign period without it, especially a mega campaign. And Build Revision mod makes the AI actually semi-competent. Central UI makes everything easier to find. The Morgan Rada mod is one of the most promising and fun Vic 3 mods out there for flavor. Being able to race your rivals to flight and fight for relics in Indiana Jones style will make the whole Victorian era feel more alive. No clouds should always be in the game and should really be included in base game. To play things out longer and make it more interesting in Hoi 4, here are a few. But be very careful, as a lot of Hoi 4 mods are very outdated. Ultimate Tech Tree makes things more interesting and allows you to play later if you wish to in terms of tech. Minor Focus Tree is expanded, gives all countries a better Focus Tree, and will make the game a bit more fun. Stars is really based on what you want to play. My mod pack is very extensive, but works very well and is a lot of fun. You have no real limits here, as there's no save translators that can cause issues. It's really just whatever you want and can get to work, so go wild. Let's get into the most important part of the mega campaign from a technical perspective. Save translators allow you to move your save from CK3 to EU4, EU4 to Victoria 3, and Victoria 3 to Hoi 4. Moving from there to Stellaris, there is no save translator, as you will simply be able to build a civilization that reflects your end state in Hoi 4 directly. The translator can be found in the Paradox forums or GitHub through the wiki pages. I will link them here as well as in the description as they provide the best context, a short guide, and an FAQ if you get confused. Briefly, I will cover how to use the save converter and set it up for the different games, which requires you to have a Paradox account. If you want to use the latest stable version, which has the lowest chance of error or issue, go to the form link on the wiki. Once on this page, you are welcome to read about the latest editions, but what you want is the download right above the main banner. This will download an .exe file for you, which when it's done, go ahead and start the installation by simply double-clicking the file. If you get a Windows error or anything like that, simply run it anyway, or remove it from your firewall. Make sure you install the converter on your main hard drive or SSD, and that you have enough room that the program isn't very large. When you're done, go ahead and launch it. All the converters for moving the different games and processes will look more or less the exact same, though the options will vary based on which one you are using. To start off with, make sure the directory links are correct on the starting page. These are simply the paths on your computer to where your installations are for the games and the save file. In this case, CK3, EU4, the mod directories. For the other converters, it will be respective games as well. For most of you, the directories will just automatically show up correct. But if you have issues, you need to find your main directories and mod directories. The mod folder is almost always the one by going to Documents, Paradox Interactive, and the game that you want. The installation will vary so you'll have to figure that out for yourself on your computer. Though for Steam, it's always the same. To start a save translation, you will need to choose the save you want to convert. You can actually convert a save at any date, but for text and continuity, I recommend translating at late or as near the start date of the next game as possible. For example, 1443 or 1444 in CK3 to go to EU4. Choose the save file by selecting it from the save game folder. This is almost always found in your documents, Paradox Interactive, 
and the game you're converting from and then save files. In this case, CK3 and save games. Make sure to select the right save and click open to load it. If you're using mods, they will automatically be detected here. For the options, I will cover them briefly for CK3. Your bookmark is simply whether you want to start at the normal 1444 start date typical in EU4 or use the start date you converted at in CK3. For example, if you save translate a game in 1412 where you ended in CK3 a bit early and hit dynamic, EU4 will actually start for you in 1412 instead with some tech changes and a few other differences. These are claims set permanent claims in EU4 for titles in CK3. You know that pesky and or useful permanent claims some countries get on their land, which is impossible to remove, unlike claims. This is more dynamic if you turn it on and based on CK3 titles if you select this. It may be a bit more chaotic, but also more fun. This, of course, will change AI behavior. The HRE mechanics are the most fun in the CK3 to EU4 converter. You can give it to the classic HRE in Germany or France, Byzantium, or anyone else really if you want to. You can choose the specific nation you want to give these mechanics to by going to the IMHRE text file in the folder you downloaded and installed in and put the name and or ID of the country you want to give the mechanics to. To manually switch this, you need to choose a kingdom or empire title that is independent and add the tag to the file you're editing. Choosing who to give the HRE mechanics is huge for the future of your mega campaign. It's best to think about logically which country has the size to become more decentralized and who would fit it best realistically. Shattering other empires allows you to break up big titles. If CK3 ends with nothing but a bunch of huge empires, I highly recommend you break them up. If you want to manually choose who to shatter, you can edit the Shatter Empires file and set them there manually using their tags. Otherwise, it will shatter all the big titles. The next option lets you decide how much to shatter them by. I recommend going to duchies, as if you want to form kingdoms, you can do so manually with editing after you get the file. You can turn vassals and tributaries of CK3 into vassals in EU4 with this option. I highly recommend it for stability. Province development is really important and changes the future of the game dramatically. In CK3, development allows you to simulate the expansion of infrastructure, economy, and size of a region, and all leaders, including AI, do it. Through the course of CK3, you will likely have many regions develop more or less than how EU4 starts out with. So making the campaign more dynamic and flow better, I really recommend you using CK3 province development. If you want a typical EU4 start with the normal development amounts due to being used to it, you're welcome to. But do note many countries will be stronger and weaker than they should be based on how things went in CK3. Expanding sources of dev transfer allows you to keep some provinces the same, or you can make it based on all CK3 regions broadly. This one's really up to you, but I recommend the latter. Clearing the Siberian choice allows you to make regions uncolonized from CK3 to fit EU4 better as it normally is. If you do not remove them, a bunch of regions that normally are uncolonized or empty will be filled. Something the Aztecs is based, but if you choose this, you may have a crisis around 1,000 years early before Stellaris, so be warned. Institution spawn and ideas decides whether you want a typical Europe getting all the tech and institutions path, or if you want it to be completely dynamic. Dynamic choice is much more interesting, but less historic, and will make Asia and the Americas much, much, much stronger. With all this done, you can now head to Convert and click Start. Wait a while for this to complete, and when it's done, simply launch EU4. In your mods, you will see a new mod created with the conversion. This mod will be in your Documents folder, and you should never delete or mess with it until you convert to Victoria. Simply include this new mod in your mod pack and launch it. Instead of having a save game, you will start the game with an entirely new situation based on the conversion. For EU4 to Victoria 3, you want to go to the wiki again and click on the form link. Run the download link above the banner again and hit download. After double-clicking the XE and installing your converter again, launch it up. The screen will be very familiar. Simply say your directories again before we continue. For options, your first choice is the same as CK3 to EU4. You can choose to date your save in it at or start at the typical 1836 start date. If you want to clear up the possible releasable countries, you're welcome to, to make things cleaner. Dead means only the ones that have no culture left, and all removes them entirely, besides the main ones. Frankly, I really recommend leaving all, but this may result in more rebellions for you and the AI, so be warned. For starting population, vanilla is the normal population at the start of Victoria 3 normally. Many nations that exist in our own history, like Britain, France, and Germany, will have their historical populations and be very strong. But your game will also be incredibly unrealistic for your own timeline 9 out of 10 times. Impush allows your population to be based on the development levels of EU4, though it can get very weird if there are a lot of AI nations with one or two provinces that massively developed. The third risk should not be chosen at all, just ignore this one. 
I was like, this one is really up to you, but I recommend the second option. There will be a good amount of migration and starvation at the start of Vic, but it will be more realistic and fun long term. For Eurocentric world, Europe gets a massive advantage for literacy rates. Frankly, I recommend turning this off, but it may be chaotic, so if things are unrealistic enough, just convert again with this on. For any conversion, always pick gradually. For what economy, which is really just building amounts, I recommend testing these if you want the best option. The VIC-3 converter is the newest besides the Hoi 4.1 and can take some tweaking. Westernization is simply more spread out, whereas per capita dev of converted pops will be more realistic but potentially one-sided. Downgrade to high-tier countries should be turned on as well as trade companies. For the U4 to VIC converter, it is newer and less ironed out compared to the earlier ones. So I recommend converting your save a couple times and test out some of the options to get to where you want. It won't be perfect and don't be afraid to do some edits. You can also use the converter to go to VIC2, but I won't be covering that. It's similar to the others already covered in this guide, and frankly, I just think VIC3 is going to be better for most players if you have the game, so go for that. For the Victoria 3 to Hoi 4 converter, you should download the same way from the wiki linked in the video and video description like the others. Conversions for Hoi 4 are the most basic at the moment, as VIC3 is still relatively new, but will expand with time. And lastly, for moving from Hoi 4 to Stellaris, this is much more freeform and allows you to choose where to go. Depending on how much you play the campaign as a whole and where things end up, it's up to you how to proceed. When playing a mecha campaign, you will encounter problems. They will be frustrating depending on severity, but it's important to remember that almost all are fixable. If you have any issues you cannot resolve, feel free to leave a comment in this video or join my Discord to ask directly. I will do my best to troubleshoot for you. Every Paradox game has the ability to use commands to fix issues or cheat, so I really recommend not doing the latter for more fun. When playing a mega campaign, if you see unrealistic issues in the game with your nation or AI, nations growing too large or generally want to make something interesting happening for the story or state of the game, use commands. Let's take a moment to talk about how you play this campaign. For full transparency and disclosure, I tend to roleplay and play all my campaigns realistically nowadays, though it's really a more recent thing for me. Having played mega campaigns for years, my earliest playthroughs were really just matte painting. It did not hold back at all. They were certainly fun, but at times I really lost interest due to being too strong and having no investment in the campaign. Frankly, to experience this campaign in its entirety, you need to have patience and you need to hold back your full power. Not all, but a lot of folks watching this video are going to be very good at least one of the games, if not many of them, and the ability to carve an empire or win is almost guaranteed. If this doesn't apply to you and you're still learning, it's also very easy just to snowball when you're doing well. But you really shouldn't. If you make an empire, or even just a large kingdom in CK3, E4 is probably going to be pretty boring. If you don't allow yourself to lose ever, the campaign will have no stakes and no real history. It will be about the Meta Dynasty and their path through history, stumping everybody on their border. And maybe, maybe, that's going to be fun for you. And if it is, by all means, go crazy. But for most people, it just won't be worth it, and you will not play the full mega campaign because it will be boring very quickly. So let me propose you an alternative. Allow yourself to lose. Allow your family to risk extinction. Allow your playthrough to have an end, even if you save edit to save them after. Play your weak leaders as fools who cause your borders to shrink and your treasury to go empty. Lead as your greatest kings and commanders, as the icons they are, leading your nation to victory and becoming legends in the story of your world and history. If you balance things, expand slowly, and even allow yourself to be divided or almost lose, you will enjoy this campaign a hundred times more. You don't have to fully roleplay like I do. Just be a little realistic and accept defeat now and then. To fully enjoy a mega campaign, you have to be willing to let go. Have a little bit of control be outside of your power. This isn't easy for most Paradox gamers. Believe me, I know. First time I tried it, the style did not come naturally, and I questioned it. But then my campaign became an amazing story of survival after I almost died out multiple times. The edge of defeat was replaced by golden eras of great monarchies, and the march through history became just that. A real history I could immerse myself in and enjoy. And I hope the same will happen to you. Because if you love strategy games and history like I do, this is it. Once you let it all go and play one of these games like this, you're never going to look back. Something else I've recently included in my campaigns is adding in Total War games. The Crusader Wars mod came up for CK3 fairly recently, allowing you to fight all your battles you choose to in CK3 and Attila. The mod even actually works for Fallen Eagle if you want to play that route. For you 4 you can fight them more manually with a bit of creativity. Empire Total War, Napoleon Total War, or any other game you want to use to simulate that time period will allow you to fight out the battle by putting the units to reflect what the battle is, and then using the God Command after for yourself or your enemy to win or lose. 
This is completely optional, but if you want even more depth and fun, I really recommend trying this out. Definitely not required, but well worth it. I've been using it in my recent Mega Campaign, and oh my gosh, it has been so much fun. The other major reason many folks are unwilling or worried to play a Mega Campaign is they don't know how to play all the Paradox games. Learning even one to a very competent level is not easy, but you need to play five if you want to go all the way through. Before you dismiss the ability to learn, let me ease your mind. There are so many guides out there, tutorials, and communities that are willing to help you learn these games. A Mega Campaign is a big time commitment but it can be played over a long period. For example, my current one is already one year old, and I'm really only at the end of Victoria 3, because I take my time and go slowly for depth and story. Learning the games to understand the basics can be done with a few YouTube videos and a practice campaign. There are also so many ways to learn the game, and you don't need to be a master to play a mega campaign. By the time you end your first mega campaign, you also have the perk of knowing all these games fairly well, or at least be able to play them. This video ended up being longer than I thought it would, but frankly, I wanted to cover the topic fully and properly. Mega campaigns are my favorite way to play Paradox games nowadays, and I'm hoping my knowledge and this video will inspire you to do your own. The amazing moments, highs and lows you will reach, and general story you will experience in these campaigns if you fully commit to one is an entirely unique experience in video gaming, made possible by passionate modders. It may seem intimidating in time and scale, and to a degree it is, but it's worth it, and you really can do it. But remember, there will be a point after you take the first step where you realize how amazing it is and will never doubt its worth for a moment after. If you have questions or technical issues, feel free to leave a comment or ask in my Discord. I have a mega campaign I've been doing and making videos of for around a year now on my channel if you want to check that out for fun or inspiration. The multiplayer roleplay Discord I found it also does multiplayer mega campaigns if you'd like to join, but they do require a tiered rank in order to show trust so the campaign doesn't get ruined by trolls. I'm Amurabe, and I will catch you later. Make sure to name one of your admirals after me if you enjoyed the video and your mega campaign.